I know that when I first found out about Instagram, I wanted to build an online business. This was when I was in college. I was attending Cornell University in upstate New York, and I saw Instagram. And, and at first, I saw it as a place to post pictures. I posted some pictures of my desk. I posted a picture of my dog. I posted a picture and you know, in high school. And uh, I eventually realized that you could actually make money with Instagram. This was a long time ago. This was like 10 years ago. And I eventually found a software where it would allow me to, you know, send 500, 1,000, 2,000, you know, messages a day, or it would allow me to like, you know, 100,000 photos a week. Uh, it would allow me to follow people, unfollow. And uh, I created a separate account for this and I used that software. And because I found that software, and this was, at an early stage of Instagram, I was able to make 10 grand a month in college in my dorm room. Like my, my, my life changed. Now that didn't last for long because, and, and that's the thing with most marketing hacks, they typically don't last forever. Now there are things that are tried and true and there's principles and there are timeless marketing tactics that do last a really long time. So point being is this, I've been online and able to make money with Instagram for a decade and I've seen the different shifts. Right now, we're going through another shift. For everybody watching this right now, I know you've seen at least one person, you know, that's a teenager and, you know, they're driving, you know, a Lamborghini or, uh, you know, or a, a Corvette or whatever it is, right? And I'm not saying that I agree with that. I'm just saying that it's possible because they're using social media as a tool and they're doing it well. And, and the problem is, is that a lot of people, some people actually, you know, buy courses or coaching or they buy products from these people and they feel ripped off, you know, and they feel ripped off because you have a kid that is a life coach and he just moved out of his mom's basement. The point is this, we're not going to focus on the negative aspects. We're going to focus on the possibilities and the different opportunities with social media and how you can leverage your personality type to take advantage of social media. Because if you're introverted, you, there's a way to take advantage of social media. If you're extroverted, there's a way to take advantage of social media. If you have a career that you're working in, well, that's going to be a different pathway than somebody that has 40 hours a week. If you're somebody that's, um, you, you like doing sales and, or maybe you, you're very organized in operations, there's different ways to leverage your natural abilities to create a real business with social media. Here's what I realized, um, also is because I'm in, uh, Las Vegas and I've gotten the chance to, you know, hang out with different content creators, right? A lot of the YouTubers in the in the finance space, and they're extremely profitable. Like I can't say their numbers and I can't say their names, but I'm just going to tell you that they have six figures, multiple six figures deposited into their bank accounts in profit every single month. And the reason why they're able to do that is because they control attention. When you control attention, you know that leads to cash flow. That's why Elon Musk purchased, you know, Twitter for 44, you know, billion dollars. And that's just what I read online. Maybe it was less, maybe it was more. I'm not really sure. And um, if you actually look at the future generations, what do they want to do? Gen Z, one of the most popular career paths that they wanted to go down was media and entertainment. So whether we're talking about, you know, teenagers or billionaires, there's different segments of the population agreeing on the fact that attention equals cash flow. You know, the average person is walking around and they're spending 60% of their time, you know, on their phones connected to a screen. With that being said, we have to take advantage of this. And, and on the other end of the spectrum, if we look at malls, there are still malls that are, are very popular and, and people are going to them but a lot of malls have shut down. A lot of traditional retail stores have shut down. So the world's shifting. We all know this is a fact. The question is, is how do we actually, you know, take advantage of this? So there's a few different ways that I've seen that have worked. So number one is you can actually be the creator. You could be the person that controls attention. For this, there's people that naturally are creative and they like to create content. Now, for some people, they can never imagine themselves doing this. For others, 
you know, maybe you want to do it. You're just not really sure how to do it. Thing that I've seen work. So is, is this, if you wanted to create content, what you would do is you would find people that are making content the, the way that you, you enjoy it. And ideally it can lead to a product or service and you would actually pick three different styles that are already working and, and you'd re create your version of that. So anyways, that's the first way is you actually are the creator. You control attention. The second way is you actually work with the wealthy and you help them go online. This works, right? There's a lot of business owners right now that have already made it, that they've already had successful companies. You know, there's actually a client um, that we just brought on and he sold the company for $30 million. He's not really online. He, he, he went the he built a traditional business that didn't rely on social media, but now he wants to build a brand, a personal brand. Why? Because he sees billionaires doing it. He sees Elon Musk doing it. He sees people that have personal brands are able to launch products into the marketplace and get billion dollar evaluations like Logan Paul. So you could actually be the be the mediator, the operator and help that wealthy person go on social media and build a brand. And obviously there's ways for you to get compensated on and just that action alone, but more importantly, you want to deep you want to think deeper is could you actually help them get on social media and help them establish the products and services that, that they would eventually be representing and could you cut yourself into the deal? <clears throat> Another, another way to go about this is just partner with companies or partner with individuals that already control attention. So let's just say that you knew how to go ahead and identify opportunities in the marketplace and, and find a uh, product market fit where you could actually see, hey, there's this creator, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of content on working out. What if they came out with a coaching program to help people with, you know, nutrition and workouts. And then they had, you know, a virtual accountability. They, they, they had, you know, um, a product lineup. And for a lot of these creators that are just creating content, some of them have made their own products, but they don't necessarily know how to run the back end operations. They don't know how to build a sales team. They don't know how to advertise. They, they want to spend their time creating content. And that's actually the thing that will lead and bring uh more attention to themselves and it will you know it's the front end of the business which is very very important and they're probably best off doing that especially if they had someone that had some know-how on being an operator on the back end that could take that traffic and turn it into cash flow so for me i've done multiple deals where i find a company that's already working the company could be doing 50 grand a month could be a hundred grand a month. One of the first deals I did like this was in 2017. I worked with a company that ran ads and they were doing hundred K a month and it was going really well. They had one salesperson and I came in and built a sales team and handled all the back end systems and operations. And we started to do hundred K a week, 200 K a week. And at the very peak, 300 K in a week. So from that deal, I didn't create the product. I didn't put up the funding to establish the company. And, you know, I wasn't handling the payroll. I was just a back end operator, mostly on the revenue generating activities, helping, you know, create a system where if they brought in leads, you know, they were going to get converted to cash flow. And from that deal alone, I was netting 40, 60, $70,000 a month from partnering with an existing company. Another deal that I recently did is with the company that is doing, they're doing about 800,000 a month. Now that is a, a decent amount of revenue. And obviously as you do more of these deals, you eventually get a track record. Once you have the track record, you're able to reach higher and do bigger deals. So rather than me doubling a company that, you know, taking it from 50 K to hundred K and maybe I make 10 grand a month from that deal, or 15, it depends on how you structure it. Um, what if I worked with the company that was doing 800K and helped them do 1.5 million a month? And I'm now netting, you know, 50, $70,000 a month from one deal versus, you know, five smaller deals. 
So you can take this as far as you'd like. You could even structure this in a way, which this is more advanced, where you could eventually work with the company, have a consulting agreement, and earn equity if you wanted to earn equity in the business. Um, you know, get a solidified rev share on the systems that you set up and even kind of have it set up in a way where you, you know, help implement these, build it out, and then take a, a percentage ongoing and you just man manage and oversee it. You're not necessarily a direct employee. You're more of a consultant or a contractor. Um, you could become an employee if you wanted to, and that's the beautiful part about this is when you understand the backend systems, there's a lot of different pathways you could take with this. So <clears throat> those are the three key ways. Each of them has their benefits. Obviously, if you're gonna become the content creator, that's gonna be a path that takes some time you know, to actually establish and get attention. The other routes, you could just plug into somebody that already has the capital or they already have some success. Now, what are you going to offer um, and, and how do you turn the intention into cash flow? So you can go with information, which is, it could be 90% 90, 90 profit, 95% profit, 97% profit. It depends on how it's structured. When I say information, I mean, you know, somebody that has a specialty it could be, dude, it could be a chef. It could be a trainer. It could be someone that's really good at sales. It could be someone that has experience uh, recruiting and they're giving the best practices of how they build an organization. It could be somebody that has experience coding. It could be someone that's a graphic designer, social media. It could be somebody that's um, maybe uh, extremely uh, creative and they make content a certain way and people want to learn how to make content. There's so many different pathways and right now I do believe that people are understanding that it's not just enough to get your degree and, and, and get the best paying job. I believe that people are starting to understand that you need to keep learning skill sets and with the right skill sets, you can, yes, have your, if you want to get a job, get a job, but you'll eventually be able to go ahead and, and maybe build, you know, your own, your own company on the side. And more people are looking to start a company because they're realizing that, man, things are getting more expensive. I need to do something to get another stream of income, right? Inflation is real. I remember when chips were a dollar. I remember when, you know, drinks were a dollar, right? So, with that being said, you can have information products, which um, those are pretty easy to set up. You literally could use a computer and you know click record and boom, you have an information product. You could do consumer goods and actually build an actual product or a brand or, or, or white label supplements or, or develop an actual product. The profit margins aren't going to be as high and there is a, a lot more components that you know go into that. Um, you have SaaS. SaaS is something that's extremely scalable. One thing that we'll do for companies that we work with is we do develop software for them and we have developed our own softwares internally. There is ways to go ahead and do this where, you know, a decade ago it might have cost you a quarter of a million to build a minimal, um, an MVP, just a first sample, the first beta run of, of, of a software. Now you can do that for a fraction of the cost and it's extremely scalable, right? So there are other things that you could offer as well, which would be high ticket services, which could be, it could be marketing, could be staffing, could be press PR, could be, you know, sales recruiting. You could go down this path and I'm talking mostly about, you know, business services, right? But there are other services that you could offer, which are just a service, right? Person buys it and then they get the service. So I said a high ticket because if you have high ticket services, you're able to get a lot of cash flow with, you know, 10 times less customers. This could also be lower ticket services as well. And there is a place for that. Assuming that you found the, the right partnership and you kind of figured out what you were going to offer, the next thing you'd want to do is ideally understand how to create value out of thin air. When I say create value out of thin air, meaning you as an individual, are the product, you are the service. The question is, to make this all real is, how do you create value out of thin air? You would need to get an understanding of sales, marketing, or operations. It could be 
either one, it could be all of them, but ideally you get some understanding in those areas. And the thing is this, you don't need to go to a four year university to go ahead and study sales to understand sales. You don't need to go to a four year university to understand marketing. You don't need to go to a four year university to understand operations. You can learn these skill sets on your end and come in. And one easy way to get your first deal is just performance based, right? Hey, I'm going to come in. I'm going to help you. I don't need a retainer. You're not going to pay me unless I increase your revenue. And for some people, it's maybe something where it's like, well, I'm not going to work for free and blah, blah, blah. You need to get out of that employee mindset. Okay. I'm telling you, if I didn't go ahead and with that first company that I worked with, whether they were doing a hundred K a month and we got to hundred K a week, if I came in with that, I said, Hey, I'm going to increase the cash flow of what you're doing right now. And you could just pay me a percentage of the increase. And that was the deal. It was very straightforward. It was easy for them to say yes to and hard for them to say no. Now, obviously before that I built a company and I had 15 sales reps, had cold callers. I've done this before, right? And I had experience uh, with that. So with that being said, if you're really serious about taking advantage of the attention economy, the next step for you is to figure out, hey, do I need to skill up? Maybe you have the skills and it's figuring out how to structure those deals.